Hey guys, I'm welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about multi view geometry and stereo vision. Uh, beforehand, we only had one camera, and, but in stereo vision, we have two cameras, so we don't have two, two dimensions anymore. Like, we can try to estimate the depth or like distances to objects when we're using stereo vision. So, in stereo vision, we have just have two cameras that is looking at the same in the same direction or like at the same point, and then we can try to estimate the depth um, for, for those two images. So let's first talk about or and get a, an overview over what stereo vision is. So when we're using stereo vision, we're, we're reconstructing uh, the 3D geometry based on camera images for uh, from two or more viewpoints. So we can compare this stereo vision to the human vision, where we have uh, we have two eyes that um, that are looking in front of us, and then if we close one of the eyes, like we're, we're having a more difficult time trying to estimate uh, the depth of, of the objects or like trying to estimate the distances to, to an object that we see. So stereo vision is like the, the human vision where we have these uh, two eyes or like two cameras that is, that is seeing the same, same things. And then we can use the two um, individual viewpoints to try to estimate the depth or distances to objects. So down here, we can see the different kind of examples where we have uh, some cameras that, is take, that's, that, that takes like images from multiple uh, viewpoints. And then we can have like a depth map, as we can see here to the right, like we have this image here and then we're trying to estimate the depth in this image here for uh, from two camera images or like uh, multiple viewpoints. And then we have and then we can calculate like the disparity uh, like the disparity uh, of the two images and then we can get a, like a depth map. So we're reconstructing 3D geometry and we have then have a, like a three, three dimensional image compared to if we only use one camera, we only have two dimensions, which is the X, Y or like the point in where the optic is in the image. So how, how, how can we estimate the distance using a uh, stereo vision? So first of all, as we talked about in, in one of the previous videos, we, 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 we first of all, we need to calibrate the cameras. So we're going to get the intrinsic and intrinsic uh, parameters from the camera calibration. And I've made a video about that if you want to go more in depth about how to, to calibrate a camera. And also I showed you um, I showed you a practical example of how we can actually like calibrate the cameras and get these intrinsic and extrinsic parameters for, for a camera. So first of all, we're going to calibrate the cameras so, so we remove as much distortion as possible. And then we can create an, an epipolar scheme using epipolar geometry, um, that which we're going to talk about in this video, and how how we can use those to like build a disparity map. And then from a disparity map, how can we how can we convert that to a depth map? And then we can actually like get the depth or like the distance to each point in in our image. So the depth map will be combined with an optical detection algorithm. And like in if we for example here down here we have a monocular vision which is only one camera. So if we're running an obstacle detection algorithm on it, like we can only detect that there's a person, person at this point here in the image, or like an, at this, uh, yeah, at this point in the image. But if we're using stereo vision with two cameras, then we can actually like run a an, an obstacle detection algorithm together with our uh, depth map, and then we can actually like estimate the distance or the depth to um to a point, or like in this case to the person here in the image. And then we get this uh, three-dimensional reconstruction of um, of what the camera sees instead of just like the monocular vision here, where we can only like see where the person is, but not like a distance to a person. So zero vision can be used for a lot of practical uh, different kind of uh, examples, and it's it's often used in, for example, like autonomous cars and and all other different kind of stuff of stuff of practical setups. So another like. Um, Another example of like how we can calculate or like estimate depth um, with only like one camera, it could be like we could have a time of flight camera, and a time of flight camera has like an infrared uh, an infrared in emitter that sends out infrared light, and then it, it hits an object, and then it can detect that that the camera can detect that infrared light that is and it has like uh, emitted. So it is estimates the distance by measuring the time of flight of a light signal between the camera and the subject for each point in the image. So it will send out a signal here from the infrared um, infrared emitter here, and then and when it hits an object, it will re it will be reflected back again here to the camera sensor, and then by like by calculating or like because then we know like the disparity here of the of the waves or like the signals that comes back, um, so it will be like the difference between those signals, and then we also have like the the we because we know the. Um, the, the, the speed of light and like the frequency of the signal we're sending out. And then we can actually like calculate or like estimate the depth by using this infrared light together with a camera. So we don't need uh, two cameras in, 
if we were in the line to that or if it wasn't possible to use two cameras then we would also do it with um with this time of flight camera here this is just another example where here we could have an image here which is the like the depth estimation of an image and then we could use that for some other calculations or estimating the depth um, and doing of the detections um, um, as well so another approach here and one of the more used ones in in like the real world practical examples is actually like the microsoft uh, connect connect to so this is like the sensor that, that is used for um, for the Xbox which has uh, this infrared projector that we just talked about and then it just has um, has a normal RGB camera and then the infrared uh, camera here uh, as I just showed you on, on the previous slide so the Microsoft Connect here it sends out this infrared uh, light here to try to like estimate the depth of the obstacles or like the points in the image and then it also just has this normal camera here that can be combined with the with the time of flight camera here. So over here to the right, we can see that we actually like have the camera and then we have the infrared projector um, or like the infrared lights that get emitted out in the room. And then the infrared camera, it detects all those lights that that's get reflected back. And then when you combine like the normal camera here and the infrared camera, then we can actually like have this uh, 3D construction here where we have like some some person here in the foreground and some furniture in the background here and then we can then we actually like have the depth in our image with only like a microsoft connect and we don't need uh, two cameras so this is a really like a very like used loose use center in in like the in the practical world as well because it's it's both like relative cheap and it does it does its purpose and we don't need like for example two two expensive cameras so we have this taxonomy of uh, like how we can optical like 3d acquisition method like how we can actually like reconstruct a, a 3d um, 3d uh, three-dimensional um, view of our image so we can have this uh, divided into passive and active where we're going to mo mostly focus on the passive one here with the stereo vision like how we can use two cameras to to use uh, to have this free 3d acquisition method and the other which was like an active one uh, with the time of flight camera and one shot structure light and also like some other multi pattern structure light so you can think of the active uh, acquisition me method where like we have to do something active to get the information where in the passive here we just have two cameras sitting and observate observating uh, observating what what happens what happens in like the frame or the image where the active one we actually like have to send out infrared light and then detect it so, so this will be like an active sensor where over here we have the passive sensor which we're going to, to, to mostly focus on in this video. So just to like recap shortly which we're also going to use a bit in this video with the, with the camera geometry of the pinhole model. So with the pinhole model we have this we have this pinhole here where all the lights from like the real world get reflected through. And then like it, it, it's all it gets here in the pinhole here so and then it will like be reflected here in the image plane inside of our camera so this will be like the pinhole of the camera and this will be the image plane that our our actual like lights get reflected to and then we have this focal length here which is the length from the pinhole to the image plane which are like image or like uh, the points from the real world get projected to our image plane so then we can set up like this pinhole um, pinhole model matrix here where we have the focal length here um, for the x and y direction often they're just equal to each other and then we have this vector here which is the u v which is uh, which is the point on the image plane and then we can like project the world coordinates here so this in this case here uh, this will be the tree here so the x y z coordinates here will be the tree in the image here and then we can project that until our image plane again with this matrix here and multiply that with our world coordinates so we're going to use this um, uh, later on in the video and then we have this uh, camera calibration here as I talked about in one of the previous videos where first of all we, we're converting a 3d point in the world to a 2d pixel so we have this conversion uh, from 3d world to our our camera and then we're going to use that for our camera calibration and then we use these multiple images here to do the actual um, calibration and we need to do it with a known object and we need to rotate around with different positions and tilt it and translate it around and then we, after that, when we're done all that, we compute the camera matrix and the distortion parameters, and then we can remove the distortion and then our camera is calibrated. I'm going way more in depth with all these steps and how we can actually do it. And I'm, I'm showing you an, an example of in OpenCV, like how we can actually do camera calibration in, um, in one of the previous videos. So you can go check that out if you want to, or, or else I'll just continue in this one. So in this example here, when we have the exterior revision, we need to calibrate both of, of our cameras. 
And these are just like the different kind of distortion parameters. Like we could have some barrel distortion or pin fusion distortion, tangential distortion. And then when we do our cali cal camera calibration, we have, for example, barrel distortion. And then we do our camera calibration and then we can translate our, our original image or like a camera to, to an undistorted image or like a calibrated camera. And then these curved lines here will actually like be straight lines and it's easier to, to apply our, our algorithms on the undistorted image here. So when we're doing cal camera calibration, we're going from uh, real world coordinates to camera coordinates first. So we're getting these intrinsic parameters where we're rotating, like we have a rotation matrix and a translation matrix, and we have to apply those to get from, from like the, the world coordinates to the camera coordinates, as we talked about in, um, in the pinhole model. And then when we have the camera coordinates, we can, we can go from the actual like camera coordinates to the pixel coordinates that we want to get in our image. And these are the intrinsic parameters here where we have the intrinsic uh, matrix where we need the focal length and the optical center as we talked about in the pinhole uh, model as well. So here we have like the actual like um, matrix set up here. So this will be uh, the world coordinates here. And then we apply um, the intrinsic parameters here and in extrinsic parameters here. And then we can have like some projection mat matrix here that can actually like get here. We have the pixel coordinates uh, Q subscript uh, sub sub I. And then we just apply all these, uh, like we convert from wall coordinates to camera coordinates and then from camera, camera coordinates to pixel coordinates. And then we have this projection matrix here where we can project uh, real um, points in, in, in the real world to, uh, to image points or like pixel coordinates in, in, our, in our image. So when we're talking about stereo vision, we have this multi-view uh, geometry. So we have a camera here to the left and one camera here to the right. And they need to be aligned on the same x and y axis to this, like so. So we so we able to use this derivation. So the only, like the only difference of the two cameras is is the c, which is the depth, um, or which is like the depth uh, or like the c axis, and that is used for estimating the depth. And um, so we have this left and right camera here where they are aligned to each other, and we just try to estimate the depth um, with the c axis. So if we take a look uh, from the above of this example here, like if we look from above, like we can use some of the geometry for, for the stereo revision. And here we look at top here and then we have like some point here we see in the image for both cameras. So the left camera here will be this triangle, um, will be this triangle here. And then we can set up some, some formulas try to, trying to like estimate um, the C here or like the disparity here from the optical center of our camera here to the line that goes um, through like to the point here we see in the image. And then we can do the same here for the right camera, um, which has the optical center here. And then we can calculate like this, this uh, like this distance here from the optical center um, to the line that goes to the, uh, to the point here we see in the camera frame. And then first of all, we can just set up some, some equations here where we can see like this XL here. So the distance from the optical center to the line here can be calculated by, by knowing this X here. So this is like um, the like the x here, and then we have have the c, which is the distance from the camera to like the point we see, and then we have the f here, which is the focal length, and then we can set up the same formula here for the x um, x subscript r, and then we have these two formulas here, and we can actually like calculate this disparity of of um, of like the, the geometry here. So this disparity in this case here will be x subscript l minus x subscript r. So it will be uh, this distance here uh, minus this distance here and then we can like have this disparity map and set up a disparity map and then when we have a disparity map we can actually like convert that to a depth map so when we have like the disparity and depth maps here like the disparity is the difference in the image location of the same 3d point from two different camera angles so this is what i just showed you here like we have these disparities here um which is like the difference in the image location so it will be this this uh, distance here and then we can like, um, if we have a, like a pair of images, then you can actually like measure the apparent motion in pixels for every point and make an intensity image from the measurement. So when we have this image here and we get multiple views from it, um, we can calculate the, like the disparity and then afterwards we can actually like calculate the depth map. So here we have this disparity here as we, as we calculated on the previous slide with one of the formulas. And these X and Y here will just be like the points in the image here. So we also already know that. And then we have this uh, B here, which we also knew from one of the uh, formulas from the previous slide and also the focal length of our camera. 
And then we can actually like calculate the C value here, which is the depth or like our estimation of the depth in the image. And then from that formula here, we can actually like set up this image here to the right where we can see uh, the depth of the images. So we can see the lamp here is, is more wide than like the, the, the more the more back in the background like the optics are like the more dark or like gray they get because they're getting f further away from the camera. So when we have this, um, when we have this depth map and the disparity map, we can actually like use something called epipolar geometry. And what this means is that we're given a point in one of the cameras and then it, the corresponding point in the other camera lies on the epipolar line. So we can see here that we, that we like uh, have a point here in the camera uh, image here or in, in the left camera and then the corresponding point in the other camera it lies on the epipolar line so this red line here will be the epipolar um, line for the right camera here and then these points here that we can see from this image uh, like from this camera here are these points here and they can be projected down to this epipolar line here on the right um, on the right uh, camera frame here or like image frame and then we have a, a seven degree freedom fundamental matrix that we can then set up and then we can find over here to the right. We can see that we have some points here in one of the images and then we have these every parallel lines here, um, which is co corresponding to the points here from the from one of the cameras. And then we can actually like um, use that to estimate the depth of the cameras um, by only on, by only having one point in one camera. And then we can just search for all the points in on the every parallel point. Uh, or on the epipolar line in the other image. So we have this steroid corresponds problem and like how can we solve it and compute the disparity? So to solve it and, and, and like try to estimate uh, the, the disparity is that we first take a pixel in the left image as I talked about, and then we have the left image here and then we search on the epipolar line for that pixel in the right image. So it will be the red line here. So this will be only a one dimensional search because the, the point we know that the point is located on the epipolar line and then we just need to search um, search through that line for the point. And then we can actually like estimate where that point is in the right um, image frame. And that, but we have one constraint here and it is that the cameras need to be aligned along the same axis um, because then you only have this one dimension and we can just search an epipolar line where this point is in the image. So every polar search in images, if we're going to like uh, trying to implement it, then we need to take each pixel on the line in the left image. So we have like, for example, an, a line here, and then we take each pixel of those lines here. And then we compare the left image pixels to the right image pixels on the same, on the same every polar line. So this uh, line here will be the every polar line on the right image. And we just compare all these pixels to each other. And then we take the pixel with the minimum cost, which will be which will be around here. And then we can compute the, the disparity of the image here, which will be around here um, with the blue here, where, where we have an arrow pointing here. So this will be the disparity here when we're doing epipolar search on this image and epipolar search on this line here in this image. So on a practical example of like how we can use stereo vision um, as we've been over, like how we can detect objects in, in an image and try to estimate the, um, the depth to it. So first we calibrate the cameras and uh, well, like the images that we're going to um, to try to estimate the depth on. And then we have the image image parameters for both the images or like the cameras that we can then um, apply together with some of the other steps that we've talked about in this video. And then we have the example down here where we have a left image or like a left camera that sees uh, this image here and a right camera that sees this image here. And then we can see like the person here is a bit further uh, in front um, compared to the, to the left image here. It also makes sense and then we just need to like calculate the disparity from these two maps here and then we can convert that disparity map to a depth map and then we have the depth compare, combined with it, um, an, an, an obstacle detection algorithm and then we have this three dimensional. So when we, when we need to compute the disparity maps here, we first we need to determine the disparity between the two images and then after that we can decompose the projection into the camera matrix both for the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters. So like to decompose um, the projection into a camera matrix, we can ju just use a built-in function in OpenCV uh, to do that. And then after that, we can estimate the depth by using the information from the last steps. So left down here, we have this disparity map here. And on the right, we have the disparity map for the right image here. And then we can use uh, these two um, disparity maps here and, and try to estimate a depth map from those. 
So to create a, a depth map, we use this projection matrix as I just talked about for each of the cameras. And then we, we can either like just apply that in, in, a, in a function in OpenCV and then we can take, take the focal length out of the camera matrix. And then we also like com can compute the baseline using corresponding values from the translation vectors. Um, so the, um, one of the intrinsic parameters, but we can also like have the baseline if we knew how far um, the cameras were placed uh, from each other. And then we can compute the depth map of the images from the disparity maps with, with these formulas that I showed you down here before. So the mo most interesting one is to see here. Um, so we have this focal length here that we got from our camera matrix that I calibrated. And then we have the B parameter here and the disparity as we calculated on the last map. So then we're using the disparity map or like the disparity for each pixel in the two, um, two image here, images here. And then we can actually like apply this formula here and then we will get a depth map for each of the images. So the left here, we have the depth map of the left image and here we have the, uh, the depth map of the right image. And then we can use those to, to just take a point um, in the depth map here and then we will get the actual like distance or depth to an object in, or like an object or a pixel in the frame. So the result of this um, depth estimation here is that we can actually like run an obstacle detection algorithm and use it together with a depth map. So in this case here, we're detecting a car, um, a car around here, and then we try to estimate the distance or the depth to that car. So right now when we have the depth map here, like we know the distance to every single point in the image from the depth map. And then we can just take the closest point of the detected obstacle. So we're running some obstacle detection algorithm and then it will um, make this boundary box around it. And then we can just take like the closest point of that obstacle um, because we know all the distances from every single point and then we can combine that and we will get like the X X and Y um, um, X and Y positions in the image from our uh, obstacle detection algorithm and then from our depth map or like our depth estimation we will get the distance to it so we'll actually like have a, an X and Y and a C coordinate so we have this uh, 3D uh, reconstruction of an image by using stereo vision compared to only uh, monocular vision where we only have um, we only have one camera and we can only have this two dimensional um, view of the, of the world because we can only have the X and Y where when we're using stereo vision, we can calculate or estimate the depth in the image as well. So we have this 3D image. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video. And also like this video if you like the content and you want more of it in the future. I'm currently also doing an algorithm and data structure tutorial and an artificial intelligence tutorial in C++. Um, where we're talking about reinforcement learning and stuff like that. So if you're interested in one of those, I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.